All right, now we're on to movie number five and part two of our video answer key for electrostatics review. So the question is, how do we calculate the stopping potential for a charge moving between parallel metal plates? Well, stopping potential means stopping voltage. So let's say I've got a positive charge that is moving towards a, a, a positive plate. Now that's going to be repulsion against it. So it's going to gently slow it down and it's going to come to a complete stop. Now if we can adjust the voltage between these two parallel plates so that the charge stops just before that plate, we can then know the stopping potential. Okay, so how do we do that? We'll equate the kinetic energy to electric potential energy. Use a variable voltage source to stop it just before and make sure all of the kinetic energy converts to electric potential just before it gets to that plate. And then what are we going to do to calculate that? Well, we know 1 half mv squared will then equal QED because that's electric potential energy between um, metal plates. How do we get that? Well, we know electric potential energy is charged times volts. And remember, volts is E times D. So in setting 1 half mv squared equals QED, we can indeed find the stopping potential. So what does that mean? Well, if I take 1 half mv squared and divide it by Q, then this side becomes ED, which we know is volts. So 1 half mv squared, which is energy divided by charge, would be then the stopping potential. You're going to see something very similar. How do we calculate the stopping potential for charge moving closer to a point charge? So imagine not having parallel plates. We have, I'll just pretend to draw a big circle here. This represents a charge. And the charge that we have moving is getting closer to this spherical charge instead of parallel plates. Well, again, we're going to set the kinetic energy to electric potential energy. So what is electric potential energy then for a point charge? Well, if we're moving closer to a large point charge, again, potential energy is always Q times V. What does that end up being? Well, that equals KQ1, Q2 divided by R. How do we get that? Well, volts is KQ over R. If you multiply this by the charge moving in it, then you get KQ1, Q2 over R. So setting 1 half mv squared equals KQ over R, we can still find the stopping potential. Or once again, we can say volts equals 1 half mv squared divided by Q. You can do it that way. Now, the nice thing about using this equation is you can find out how close a charge will get to a point charge by using this equation. Setting 1 half mv squared equals KQ, big Q divided by R. R is going to be the distance from the center of the large charge that the test charge moved when coming to a complete stop. Okay, next, what about a system like this? Well, if we have a system like this, we have two spheres charged. They have the same mass and same charge, and our job is to figure out what the value of that charge is. Okay, so to figure this out, we have to remember that downwards is force gravity, and then, of course, we have a tension force going this way. Well, force tension Y would equal force gravity in this case. And force tension Y, if this is our angle theta, our angle theta is over here. Force tension y is equal to mg cosine theta. It's force tension x then that's pointing in this direction that's opposing the electric force pushing this outwards. So we know that force tension x is equal to the electric force. So how does this work? Well, we know force tension y is equal to mg. So force tension cosine theta equals mg. So force tension is mg divided by cosine theta. OK? So how do we get? Uh, our force tension x. Well, we know force tension x, we're going to be using the sine okay, of theta here. Okay, and what do we got there? Well, we're going to have force tension sine theta equals force tension x. So over here, force tension x is force tension sine theta. Well, force tension is mg divided by cosine theta. Well, sine divided by cosine will give us tangent. So the mg tangent theta equals kq squared over r squared will give us the answer to this question. Okay, now how do we figure r? Well, we have the length r, right? So if we take the length of r, multiply it by the sine of theta, we'll get this distance here. So two times the length multiplied by sine, th sine theta will give us a distance between these two charges here. And that's how you would figure out the value of the charges are. Okay, next, we're on to finally the capacitors in this section. 
Okay, how are capacitors added in series? Well, we reciprocally add those in series. So 1 over C total equals 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2, etc. How are capacitors added in parallel? Well, in series, they're reciprocally added. In parallel, we just simply add them up. Capacitor 1 plus capacitor 2, etc. is equal to capacitance total. Then finally, how do we do them in combination? Well, in general, we try to get to a simple series. Okay, so you might need to add the capacitors in parallel first. And then once that's done, you reciprocally add what's left over. But your eventual goal is to try to get to a simple series that get reciprocally added so you can get C total. And then multiply C total by the charge. And then go backwards to try to figure out the value of each capacitor individually. How do we calculate the value of a capacitor? Capacitance is K epsilon naught A divided by D. Now this K is not the 9 times 10 to the 9th. Okay, it is the dielectric constant. We assume that it's 1 if there's a vacuum or in air. Otherwise, K would be either determined or given to you. Okay, so this is how you figure out the value of a capacitor. A is the cross-sectional area of the plates exposed to each other, and D is the distance between them. Okay, and epsilon naught permittivity of free space is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. How do we calculate the value of energy in a stored capacitor? Well, Q does equal C times V. Okay. But we can take an integral underneath a little curve of volts and charge, and we end up getting one half CV squared. Okay. So if you take the integral of this equation here, okay, you'll get one half CV squared. And we did that in class using a, a graph of uh, charge and volts, and we took the area of the triangle. So this is the energy stored of a, for a capacitor. Okay, so that's everything to review in electrostatics. We will try a progress check and see how you do.